Today we're recapping a romantic drama, 365 Days. Spoilers ahead. The movie opens with an aerial shot of the island of Lampedusa on a lone building right before the Mediterranean Sea. On the rooftop of this building, a business meeting is going on between two groups. Two men speak with Massimo's father, while Massimo and Mario, his father's advisor, stand behind him. These two men have a business proposition. They want Massimo's father to get involved in the human trafficking business. However, the old man is not interested, despite the promise of a good cut from the deal. Instead, he calls Mario, his trusted advisor, and walks away from the men. At the same time, Massimo's holding a pair of binoculars towards the raging sea. In the frame is the image of a woman smiling, her hands raised towards the sky. His father appears beside him and asks what he was looking at. Massimo hands him the binoculars and his father takes a look at the same woman. He isn't impressed. He warns his son to be careful of beautiful women, terming them heaven for the eyes and hell for the soul. He then turns to face him and reminds him that fun and pleasure will come in due time, adding that now is not the time for such frivolities. But suddenly, blood spatters against Massimo's face. His father has been shot by the dealers. In an instant, both father and son crumble to the ground. Massimo's father dies at the scene while Massimo is given CPR. Five years have passed, and Massimo's in San Francisco on family business. In a meeting with top executives, Massimo's told that the company was only able to recover 12% of his family's assets. Almost immediately, the scene cuts to Warsaw, Poland, where a hotel employees meeting's held. We're briefly introduced to Laura Beale, who's being berated by another employee. Back at San Francisco, Massimo asks that he's given a refund with 10% interest. When the top investor terms it impossible, a number of guards walk in to denote fear. Massimo establishes dominance by threatening the members of the board. He boasts that he'll buy the company when he's done and fire every member of the executive. After the meeting in Warsaw and San Francisco, Laura Beale and Massimo get into different cars in their respective cities. Beale pulls out her phone and takes a sexy video of her cleavage in the taxi. Massimo, on the other hand, gets a raunchy video from Anna, a video which he stops watching halfway. Beale arrives home to her boyfriend, Martin, working on his laptop. She kisses him, but he stops her with the excuse that he has to finish working. He also reminds her that they have a flight to catch in the morning and urges her to get some rest. Beale is obviously disappointed and she walks away from him. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. Massimo flies back to Italy on a private plane with Mario and he discovers that a container filled with cocaine had been hijacked. A young man, Domenico, promises to find whoever's involved and kill him. However, Massimo is silent at the news. Instead, he bottles his fury and goes back to his cabin. In here, he forcibly grabs the air hostess and pushes her to perform oral sex on him. Coincidentally, Beale pleasures herself with a vibrator in her bedroom in Warsaw at the same time. The next morning, Laura Beale arrives in Italy with her boyfriend, Martin, and best friend, Olga. She celebrates her birthday in a beautiful restaurant where Martin announces her 29th birthday to everyone present, who in turn sing her a birthday song. The waiter brings a drink to the table, which is Laura's favorite. She shows a tiny smile and is grateful to Martin for remembering. But her boyfriend's confused. He confesses that the drink was not his idea. Laura's disappointed and she tells the group that she has to use the toilet and excuses herself. Unfortunately, she's unable to find the toilet. And in her search, she suddenly bumps into Massimo. For a brief second, they stare into each other's eyes before Massimo asks if she's lost. The next morning, Laura and Olga are by the pool, enjoying an afternoon sun. Laura tells her best friend she hasn't seen Martin all morning, adding that she has called his phone to no avail. Olga is shocked, asking why he would do that to her on her birthday. Laura uses this opportunity to reveal her relationship troubles. I'm not the most important thing to him, Laura says. She admits that Martin in fact treats his friends and work as more important. Her boyfriend arrives with a smile plastered on his face. He says he went to Etna, where he just had the time of his life. This angers Laura, who reminds him that this was a place they had planned to visit together. Martin chides her not to get worked up, especially since she has a weak heart. A brief fight happens between the couple and ends with Laura pushing her boyfriend into the water. Sad and dejected, Laura takes a walk around the city. But this unfortunately ends with the beautiful woman getting kidnapped. The next morning, she wakes up in a strange room with locked doors. Later at night, the doors are opened and she's finally able to step out of the room. 
She is shocked to find a painting of herself hung on the wall, but before she's able to process all of this, Massimo appears behind her again. She immediately recognizes him as the man from the restaurant, but she faints before she's able to make sense of the situation. As soon as she regains consciousness, she challenges her captor, asking why she's with him in a strange building. Massimo forces her to sit and proceeds to tell her about how he had seen her at the airport, how he had almost died, and how his father had died before his eyes five years ago. He tells her that when his heart stopped beating, there was an image of her before his eyes, and he would see this image every day until he came back to life. He's been searching the world for her, and always nursed the ambition that one day, she would be his. He concludes by saying that he would never make love to her without her permission. However, Laura is not impressed by his story. She tells him that he can't just kidnap her and expect her to be his immediately. She asks to be let out of the house and be back with her boyfriend, friends, and family. Massimo refuses and hands her a series of pictures that prove Martin's unfaithfulness. He adds that his people have packed her bags from her hotel room and also left a message for her now ex-boyfriend Martin. The letter informs Martin that she would be moving back to Poland, moving out of his house and consequently disappearing from his life. Again, Laura is not bought by these actions. She makes an attempt to angrily walk out on Massimo, but his fierce hands grip her down, and he warns her not to provoke him into anger. Releasing her from his grip, he makes an offer. She has 365 days to fall in love with him. If she has no feelings for him on her next birthday, Massimo tells her that he'll set her free. Laura pulls out a gun and aims it at her captor, but it's only a few seconds before Massimo grabs the gun and pins her against the wall. This action is interrupted by the entry of Mario and Domenico, and the advisor tells Massimo that a delivery has been made. Massimo lets go of Laura and orders Domenico to take her back to the room. Outside, Mario informs Massimo that the ongoing feud with the Gattuso family is only going to ruin the family business. Instead, Massimo tells him to organize everyone for a meeting. A few seconds later, Massimo's in an underground prison, speaking with a man tied to a rock. The man's Alfredo and he's being punished for selling children to a brothel. Just before the scene ends, Massimo makes a promise to his prisoner. He assures Alfredo that his existence would be wiped off the face of the earth as punishment for his crime. While Massimo attends to urgent family business, Laura tries to escape the villa. However, her goal is defeated when she witnessed Massimo and his men shoot Alfredo to death. Shocked at the sight of this event, she collapses in fear. The next morning, Massimo explains to her that Alfredo had it coming. He had sold children, stole, and cheated his family. But again, Laura pays no attention to his words. Instead, she asks for her cell phone and laptop, a request which is promptly denied by Massimo. He tells her that these will come in due time, but right now she has to prepare for a trip. In a drastic turn of events, Laura slaps him across the face, but this time Massimo doesn't react. Laura slowly settles in. She enjoys a delicious breakfast with Domenico and catches a nap before Massimo appears again. This time he drags her onto a trip to Etna, where she buys the most expensive clothes and shoes. After a brief fight in one of the stores in Etna, Laura tries to escape again, but just like before, she fails. Massimo corners her before she gets far and tells her to use better shoes next time if she wants to run. Seeing that she could talk to him now, Laura asks him if he really meant what he said about not touching her without her permission. Massimo nods in the affirmative, which causes Laura to ask for her laptop and cell phone again. Later that night, Laura and Massimo sit for a romantic dinner. For the first time since they met, Laura controls the conversation, even going as far as telling Massimo that her grandma makes better dinner than his chef. She asks him about his business, but Massimo reveals little. He mentions that he has a number of clubs, hotels, and restaurants that he manages. He has inherited all these from his father, he says, but it's not the life he wanted for himself. During this conversation, Massimo receives a text message from Anna, the same woman who sent them raunchy videos at the start of the movie. He promptly ignores the text and chooses to focus on the conversation with Laura. After dinner, Laura gets her phone and laptop. She calls her mother to tell her she's doing very fine. She's got a new job in Sicily, Italy, and it would require her to be gone for a year. The next morning, Laura wakes up to discover Massimo by her side. She rushes to the bathroom to take her bath, only for Massimo to join her a few seconds later. In the bathroom, she teases him with her naked body, a move which makes him angry. Laura is forced to board Massimo's private jet on a trip to Rome. In Rome, Laura goes to his hotel room and teases him once again. Just like the last time, she walks away the minute he's about to make love to her. But this time, he chains her to his bed. But despite this, Massimo refuses to make love to her. He alternatively tells her to get dressed, as they have to be in one of his clubs. 
Laura wears a seductive dress to the club, an action that gets Massimo angry, and she further infuriates him by dancing with a man from a rival mafia family. This man later tries to forcefully have his way with her, but his attempt is crushed by Massimo's appearance, who points two guns at the rival family and orders them to get out of his club. The next morning, Laura wakes up on a yacht to discover Mario and Massimo arguing. Mario's visibly angry with Massimo for shooting the hand of the man who Laura had flirted with. He tells them that he started a war between two very powerful families, and the only way to ease the tension was to get rid of Laura and go back to Anna. Laura appears and apologizes for her action, but Massimo wouldn't hear it. He lashes at her for dressing like a whore to his club, and blames her for his actions. An argument ensues between the two, which ultimately leads to Laura falling into the water. Scared and panicking, Massimo jumps into the water and saves her. Later that day, Laura regains her consciousness and is surprised to see Massimo by her side. She's grateful to him for saving her life, and in return he tells her that he does not want to lose her. Laura seduces him again, and they finally make love for the first time. After the intense lovemaking session, Massimo and Laura go to a ball together, and this is where we see Anna for the first time. She introduces herself to Laura as the first and true love of Massimo, and tells Massimo in Italian that she's going to kill Laura. After Anna leaves, Laura wants to know what she said in Italian, and as soon as he tells her, Laura asks to leave and walks away from him. Back at the hotel, Massimo and Laura make love again. However, as soon as they finish, Massimo tells Laura he's sending her back to Warsaw to visit her loved ones. He also promises to join her as soon as he's able to. Just as he's about to walk out, he tells her for the first time that he loves her. On the car trip to the airport, Domenico reassures Laura that Anna isn't a problem. However, a phone call causes Domenico to stop the car and rush away. But before he leaves, he tells a confused Laura to wait in Warsaw. Laura arrives in Warsaw and reconnects with Olga, her best friend. Olga's angry for obvious reasons, claiming that she thought Laura was kidnapped. Laura confirms her fear that she had in fact been kidnapped, but has now fallen in love with her captor. But Laura's angry at the fact that Massimo's family keeps her in the dark. She hates being treated like a doll and hates that she was sent to Poland with no reason whatsoever. Olga, angered, advises her to back out. Together, the girls enjoy a full day at the spa and a night at the club. Laura is, however, distracted as she waits for Massimo to make contact. At the club, she runs into Martin, who says he's been looking for her for so long. He apologizes and tells her that he's still in love with her. But Laura's not having any of it. She walks away from him and makes her way back home. Still, Martin doesn't give up. He follows her back to the apartment and tries to convince her to get back with him. Despite Laura's refusal, Martin refuses to leave. But when Massimo's thick baritone interferes, her ex-boyfriend decides to leave. Laura's angry at Massimo for disappearing for so long. But this anger quickly turns to passion the moment he hugs her. Again, they make love. Laura opens his shirt and she discovers that he's been wounded. But Massimo assures that the problem has been solved. She then tells him that she doesn't need 365 days because she has fallen in love with him. The next morning, Massimo proposes to Laura, and she agrees to marry him. He then proceeds to meet her parents, but as he's about to, Laura tells him not to tell them exactly what he does. Laura and Massimo travel back to Italy, and Laura tells her now fiancé that she doesn't feel so well. Massimo urges her to see a doctor, but she changes the subject of the conversation. She asks that she invites Olga to their wedding since her family wouldn't be able to because she doesn't want them to know about Massimo's lifestyle. Olga arrives and learns that Laura's pregnant, but rather than celebrate the news, she's angry that Laura would get pregnant after being with Massimo for just two months. After she calms down, Olga urges Laura to tell Massimo about the pregnancy. Laura obliges and calls her fiancé, asking if they can talk over dinner. At the same time, Mario receives a call informing him that the life of Laura is in danger. Meanwhile, Laura's car goes into a tunnel, and the phone call with Massimo goes dead. Mario rushes to Massimo to share this new information with him. As soon as Mario appears, Massimo breaks down in tears when he realizes the implications of this message. At the entrance of the tunnel, Laura's car does not emerge. Instead, a police car blocks the entrance. This is a review for 365 Days, which was produced by Masij Kowalski, Iwa Lewandowska, and Tomas Mendez. The movie starred actors like Anna Maria Sikluka, Michelle Marone, Bronislaw Warklowski, Otar Sarl Dees, and many others.